Bonjour à tous. Euh, merci d'être présent avec nous pour cette conférence. Donc, je m'appelle Clément Marcelot, je suis ingénieur consultant chez BitSight. Euh, je suis accompagné aujourd'hui de Juliette Buisson, qui est responsable commerciale en charge du secteur euh, cybersécurité nationale. Donc, la zapette. Okay. Donc, l'agenda aujourd'hui. Euh, quelques minutes très rapidement d'abord, simplement pour rappeler ce qu'est BitSight, ce qu'est l'approche de BitSight, du rating, ce qu'on monitor, la méthodologie, etc. Une fois qu'on aura posé ces bases-là, on fera un zoom sur la France du point de vue CNI. Alors CNI pour nous, c'est Critical National Infrastructure ou Cybersécurité Nationale en fin de compte. Euh, on prendra quelques exemples concrets. Euh, de, de, qui sont, on n'aura pas le temps de tout détailler évidemment, mais on pourra prendre quelques points. Interesting user cases, and we of course keep some time for questions and answers, and also get back on some use cases at the end. So very quickly, I'm not going to give you all those figures. We are a publisher of cybersecurity rating and cyber risk management. Uh, we have a number of customers. We have been existing for a certain number. Um, Yes, now we were the ones who initiated the cyber rating concept. This comes out of the MIT lab. And one of the interesting aspects of the slide, the most recent one, is notice who entered the capital of BitSight about a year ago. And um, they invested quite a number of money with BitSight. So Moody's, for those who don't know it, Moody's, it's there are a risk credit, risk uh, noting, but they are Moody Analytics and they do risk management. So they invested in BitSight in order to use the BitSight as a, an expert in terms of cyber risk evaluation and cyber risk because they have uh, noted, as we know all, this is a full scale topic that needs a certain expertise to be properly analyzed. Uh, so So um, the start of the rating of BitSight is to be able to transpose technical issues, complex issues, complex for us, but even more for, um, for a non-expert of cybersecurity, a novice in cybersecurity, or just a random factor who wants to apprehend the cyber risk of, your, of its organization. The idea is to transpose that in a, in a rating, just like we do it for other types of risk, like the credit risk. So this is a rating that goes from 250 to 900. It's produced in continuously by BitSight. So every day this rating that can go up or down. We monitor about 40,000 million companies around the world. And all this is being done through a SAS platform. So the message Technology is through this platform, through our infrastructures from SimCall that are global. We are going to collect events. We're going to collect signals. We're going to detect uh, signals that comes behind the IP addresses from some organization. We're going to also going to look. We don't just listen. We also look at the exposed system, the configuration, in order to extract from them Uh, best practices or indicators or signals that are going to tell us more about the performance of the organization. The cyber risk of BitSight is measured through the aspect of a performance over time, the capacity of an organization to maintain an efficient level on all its cyber controls and over time. It's not a uh, it's not an exposition based approach. It's not at one moment. That is one of the components we're going to analyze, but the timely performance will be more as closely correlated to the risk. There's a number of risk vectors that are going to sh uh, extract the systems. We're going to look at the inputs, the incidents, the events that we're going to have around that but also the um, outgoing signals that we're going to um, detect. It's, this rating is done every day and the performance over time is important. And we do a rating, we always produce the retrospective over 12 months because the trend, the evolution of the rating is also important, even, even, even more important than the rating at one moment of organization. It's more the trend rating that is important. So now I'm going to pass the microphone to Juliette. Yes, the microphone works. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here today. The aim of today 
is to present you how BitSight helps the National Centers of Cybersecurity to evaluate the cyber uh, risks uh, in their organizations of, of, in, in their vital important organizations. So we're going to do a focus. I wanted to show you some examples of uh, some cyber national cybersecurity centers. So which for instance, the Homeland Security Department. We use uh, they use BitSight data in order to establish new policies and new regulations regulations for U.S. companies and their industries. More recently, uh, 2023, uh, we started a project at European level with ENISA, with the European Cybersecurity Authority and the different members of the EU. They provide the necessary visibility for the improvement of their international and national position regarding cybersecurity. So you've uh, understood that the government agencies with which we work mostly are the national cybersecurity centers, the CERT, the CCERT, at regional and national level regulators, but also ministries and all type of government agencies that have whose mandate it is to to help the companies and to keep an eye on the security within the countries. What do these organizations protect? The, the need to vital importance organization for the country, the governments, the populations in a wider sense, and of course have a vision of all the events that are going to impact the IP addresses in the in the countries. In the in the in the countries. So the same for critical industries or the industry in the wider sense. So I'm going to speak now more about the approach of these um, Their approach is to have an overview, measure, compare the different data that BitSight um, uh, can provide, national or at industry level, how we, it will be compared with similar um, or or even an average at worldwide or European level. The measured data will be measured and based on factual data that has been collected and analyzed, which we are going to call risk vectors. So Clément mentioned that these, um, it's correlated to incidents that can happen on these IP addresses and of course concern companies or an, or an entire, um, so these are then compiled in dashboards that allow the government agencies to generate reports uh, and passed on to the decision makers that are interested in national and international cybersecurity issues. Um, once uh, this uh, overview has been done and once what we have discovered at the country level or intra-country level, the government agency will then define priorities and establish uh, action plans in order to determine what should be the priority at country level, what are the priorities on which they need to focus to help them in priority mode. This will allow an improvement of the cyber resilience of these uh, society who are directly linked to that industrial sector or even um, or improve the cyber resilience at country level or of, of the population level. So the idea of today was to present you an extract of a report that BitSight can generate um, at the data level of France, for instance. So the different data that have been analyzed and collected on all the data that has been geolocalized in the country that's going to be allowed to define the global rating of the country and then compare it with other countries. Um, it allows you to compare the ratings at one, at one moment between the different countries. Here you see the average of and France and the average um, G7 country rating or do a trend over the year and um, it compared between um, and you can do any comparison you want, you wish. It's also a way to find out how you situate um, different between the different EU countries, EU um, and France here, 
we are here in the average at 620. So we can measure if an improvement has been um, imp has occurred during the, the last year. So in green we can see an improvement or stagnation. In red there is a goal going down compared uh, uh, compared to the last year. Uh, it'd be interesting to analyze the positive or the uh, evolution of the rating over one year. And then we can see on which industry we need to focus in order to improve regulations or implement solutions at this sector. So once we have done this analysis at national level by taking uh, all the all the risk criteria then we can do a focus on some risk criteria uh, like for like the specific risk like here the botnets detection of botnets within the country you can see the orange line here is the European Union the more the curve is low in the graph the better the country manages botnets we can see that from that um, that Belgium works pretty well in that area. So the different risk vectors will be um, compared in order to establish a trend. So here you can see different criteria of criteria botnet malware service potentially exploited, but also other criteria or the other or the bad risk criteria. So the analysis of these graphs allows us to define the priorities for which the companies of that country or of that industry will be will be uh, will have to focus their efforts efforts. They will have to raise awareness and to help the companies to detect and to remedy the um, failures that have been detected. So I wanted to show you a focus on the authority and political uh, trends in France. Here, this graph allows us to compare the evolution of the rating of the different uh, political ministries, government ministries in France over the last year. And also here in vertical axis, you have the possibility to compare this variation with the average of the industry at European level. So the reports will also be focused on on vital importance um, so we'll be able to work specifically on this critical company so of course I um, uh, analyzed it and this al allow us to analyze their annual progression <coughs> and compare them with the average from their respective industries Water supply, for instance, so these reports that are created by Bitside at national level, they are basically on a funnel approach that allows you to compare the global post position of the countries among the, each other and then focus on some industry and some risk vectors. The data that are delivered by Bitset will allow us to prioritize the risk uh, products and to improve and the ways of improvement and to monitor the impact over time when new regulations occur. It's actually what the Be what Alexander de Croo, the Belgian Prime Minister, uses in order when he does his reporting to the Belgian Parliament. Now I'm going to pass the microphone to Clément regarding national initiatives. As I said earlier, there are many risk different uh, risk risk vectors. I cannot um, <coughs> just take in one um, concrete example. Downloads, the specific download of contents of copyrighted content. What you need to know is that in reality today. All the countries do not have the same legislation, willfully or not, around the topic of downloads and around, and as far as Europe is concerned, not the European Union because you recognize 
some friends here who are not in the EU, but at the European region, there's not many countries who've set up legislations. We all remember Hadopi uh, some time ago now that was implemented. And uh, what is quite interesting, we can legitimately ask ourselves the question, what could be the impact of such a legislation at the country level? Um, I think we're all more, the idea is not here to to say is it right to um, to download or not, that the, the crux of the matter is not the why are we measuring this is because 70 percent of the content is exchanged on these BitTorrent exchange channels, 70 percent of this content is already infected by malware. So for us that is a very strong indicator in terms of um, that is an um, important uh, risk vector. Um, it's also a very important uh, signal when we have this type of of, uh, of of this type of element coming out of a private organizations. Here in countries we have um, that have banned copyrighted content download. You can't read it really much. What you see on this graph to the left is the number of events that we have seen per 100 users. Of course, we're not going to compare the number, the, the raw numbers of downloads, but we've, we compared it on a per 100 units. So the average is 22 events measured on the EU. And if we look at the four countries, um, if we look at the four other countries and we look at the bottom and of course the UK, in including UK, the number of events is far, far lower. We have no, it's very clearly that it's, these are the four countries that really uh, lower this rate because of far less element from that. Uh, it's interesting, you could ask yourself after all these years, uh, is it, does it have an effect or not? Uh, but I'm going to nuance this. Of course, the way we are going to assign this, we're going to map this. We're going to we're going to geolocalize the IP addresses, and we know, of course, there's two ways of interpreting this. And uh, first of all, um, there's other has they've switched to more legal platforms, and other they went to VPNs. So the IPs which we knew were seeing on these platforms because we. We work just like Hadopi. We have uh, watchdogs on the platforms. These are IP addresses that come from other countries like Denmark or where the connections are not very expensive. Here we have um, graphs uh, over years. The other actions are taken. Here you have a regulator uh, with um, fines that are levied over time. And then, uh, then maybe more tactical uh, actions, like if you followed up in February this year, the uh, French legislators asked some operators in France to block the access to the 50 biggest down torrent downloading sites. And what we see here in the curve, it's a number of events. You see uh, the big drop off, um, first observation, a short time it works. Over the short, the number of uh, it's it's uh, dropped because users didn't know where to turn to to turn to to find where the things to download, uh, but it doesn't work for a very long time. We redid the curve, the uh, after a certain why and um, uh, I mean the curve very quickly came exactly back where it was, and um, it works technically. But very quickly, the threat. I mean, if when you short close one of these sites, twelve others oh, others happen, and people always find ways to download from somewhere. So, so I'm not going to come back into the, all the risk vectors, but um, some of these data are quite interesting, especially for us. Um, Sometimes when you're not exactly clear, you don't really see. Uh, it's interesting of putting these together and co for comparison. As just to get back 
what is interesting, and we have not necessarily shown the figure here, is what's interesting is that when we started comparing the different countries on the botnet curve, which I showed you earlier, it was interesting to see and to know that Finland has established a couple of years ago a, a very strict policy of zero botnet and they set up uh, regulation and they educated the companies and they provided tools that allow the company to fight against these botnets and when we compare the botnet curves, uh, the trends with the other uh, European countries, Finland is really the country that is at the bottom of the, of the curve um, the low, and the lowest you are, the better it is. So I just want to mention it. We haven't mentioned it on this graph, but um, oh, we can see comparison over time. Um, we can see an impact on the curves, but we can also can know how the countries are positioned and what are the different regulations uh, impacting the various ratings. So. Yes, thank you very much for that. So I don't want to, it's, we want to keep um, five minutes for questions. Just a quick overview, and um, I presented BitSight. There's two main use cases in the rating use when you want to manage your cyber risk. You need to monitor your own performance and uh, monitoring your own performance of your own organization. And uh, in order to have tools that allows you to communicate with other stakeholders, not necessarily people from the from uh, from the cyber world, the board members or shareholders. It provides a common language that allows to quantify the risk and make it understandable. The other use case is to transpose this in a context of supply chain. Uh, most of the time it will be supply chain, but you can also apply to all type of third party. It, can, it could be supply chain, it could be sometimes clients. Um, I mean, Schneider Electric did a experience feedback during a fit, fit talk on the use case on the OTI. But globally, when we're going to speak about supply chain, um, the topic is very often, usually, uh, when we talk about third party, it's going to be supply chain. And, uh, and here in this case, with the crossing of two worlds, in the national security use case, you look at your per own performance your country, you can also consider that each country operating in this country is also a third party, which we are going to monitor. We're going to try to reduce as much the, the, the risk. So this is the big axis of BitSight. And um, so the, it's always the same risk vectors. The algorithm is the same. Uh, in order to be comparable, but what is going to change is, is going to toolbox. The, um, the, the tool set is not going to be the same from one case to the others. When we, um, we try to have a metric to communicate internally with stakeholders, maybe do financial quantification of the cyber risk that is also um, having the capacity of not just relying on the on the fair methodologies that are quite good, but um, but they also have a lim their limitation, and we can also use this as communication tools towards the outside. That can be um, it can be cyber insurance, it can be stakeholders, it can be uh, shareholders, and you know, just to compare yourself. Um, the financial quantification. I won't have time to go too much into that. Um, and um, and um, the use case of third parties. And there's some that might be a new for you, who even if you know bit site and rating for us. Last year we have bought a um, in order to um, automatize the. Uh, certification and questionnaires so that you can all, um, make it automatic so that we do not just base ourselves on the rating, but that will be collected from the outside that we complete that with the questionnaire so we all know 
uh, in a more automatic way in order to speed up, uh, you know, so that there's less workload for that. I tried to make a really quick uh, overview of the this different topics. Um, if you have any questions. Go ahead, um, just grab the microphone. You have shown the reputation by country regarding the botnets. Do you manage to take into account VPNs and proxies when someone has a proxy or a VPN in the most rated country in order to benef uh, benefit from the best reputation? based on this activity? Yes, good, very good question. Yes, the metrics, they are based on the geolocalization of the IP address. Since we look at this from the outside in, we are not at the beginning, we're not in the communication chain. The only information that we will have is, uh, is the uh, orig originating IP, and so if it's a VPN, then it would be the IP attributed by many VPN terminations for for in Denmark for illegitimate usages and yes um, it will increase the rate for Denmark let's say that um, we need to simply integrate it in our comparison and in our calculations but we need to take it into account we not read raw data it requires some analysis behind to contextualize all that <laughs> 